All right, you guys ready to learn about Joshua today? Who's heard of Joshua before? We have. We have the songs. Remember, we turned down. Ah, see, Simon already knows the story. I know. <laughs> okay. All right, well, welcome to Bible Club number seven, week number seven. Okay, let's sit quietly and let's pray. All right, thank you, Lord, for gathering us here. Um, I pray, Lord, that you'll help the children have fun today and help us to learn about the story of Joshua as they go into uh, the Promised Land and fight their first battle. So we thank you, Lord, for this lesson. Pray that we will learn from it. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, what were my three rules? Sit quietly. You're sitting quietly? Yes. <laughs> Second rule is you have to pay attention, right? When the bishop's talking, you need to be listening, paying attention. And who knows the third rule? No, just Timothy. Yes, thank you. Okay. All right, today we're learning about Joshua. So this is book number six in the Bible, even though we're up to week seven. Why is that? Because we spent two weeks in Genesis, didn't we? So today we're going to learn a bit about Joshua and the battle at Jericho. Now we're going into the promised land. Now here, we don't know exactly what Moses looked like, but this is a picture of Moses that somebody's drawn. Now before they went into the promised land, did you know that Moses wasn't allowed to go in with them? Why didn't he? Because he disobeyed God previously at the waters of Meribah. You know, at the, at the rock, when he struck the rock instead of speaking to the rock the second time. I don't think that was actually the waters of Meribah. I think that was the bitter waters. So Moses wasn't allowed to take the people into the promised land. So God took him up to a really high mountain and said to Moses, you're only going to be able to see the promised land, but you're not going to be allowed to go in. So because Moses wasn't allowed to go in, God used Joshua. So Joshua was the man. And we don't know if this is what Joshua looked like, but this is just somebody's drawing of Joshua, you know, looking over the people. So he was chosen. He was a servant of Moses, but he was chosen. After that, the rest of the people died in the wilderness. He was chosen to lead the people into Jericho, into the promised land. Now here's a picture of Jericho that somebody's drawing. So it was a city and round about it had these big walls. So you know what God told Joshua to do when they were going into the promised land? He said, when you go and fight against Jericho, I want you to march around the city. And you're going to do that for six days. So every day for six days, they marched around the city. And then God told them on the seventh day, all the priests are going to blow their ram's horns and you're going to shout. And then the walls. What's going to happen, Simon? And they come tumbling down, don't they? So that's what they did. The priests were carrying the Ark of the Covenant, see, with their ram's horns. And they marched around the city once every six days. Now let me ask you, when they were doing what God commanded them to do, do you think some of the people in Jericho were making fun of them? See, they're probably saying, like, look at these guys. They're just marching around our city. What do they think that's going to do? Because sometimes when you obey God, you do what God wants you to do, sometimes people are going to make fun of you. But should you stop doing what God wants you to do? No, you should keep doing it. You don't listen to the people making fun of you. They don't know God, you know. So God is getting them to march around. So they marched around once a day, once every day for six days. And then what happened on the seventh day? Timothy, do you know? Yeah, well, they marched around seven times on the seventh day. And then the priests, what did they do? They took their ram's horns and they blew their ram's horn. See, we have a ram's horn here that we made. 
a ram song. I don't know what the ram song might have sounded like, but maybe it sounded something like this. <laughs> what do you think? Who wants to have a go? You want to have a go, Simon? You blow the ram's horn. <laughs> Do you want to go, Jeremiah? Blow the ram's horn. Oh, that's, a very, that's a very soft horn. <laughs> so a ram's horn might look something like this. We've just made it out of masking tape, but you can see it looks kind of the same. And on the seventh day, what did they do? They blew the ram's horn. And what did the people do? They shouted. Ah! And what happened? The walls came crashing down. I'm sure Jericho wasn't expecting that, but this was a miracle from God. When they blew the ramps on, you see the people shouting over here. So this was on the seventh day after they'd marched around seven days. And the walls came crashing down. And then they went in and there was a great slaughter of the people and God delivered the people into their hand. Look at that sword. Who's this? This is Rahab the harlot. So there was a prostitute that was living in the city. And because she had helped the spies that had went in to go spy out Jericho, she was spared from this judgment. So anybody that was in Rahab's house was spared. You know, so her family and children. Oh, I don't know if they're her children, but... Other people's children? Anybody that was in the house? And then what happened to Jericho? It was burnt with fire. They burnt the whole city down. And they took all the gold things which were consecrated for God and the battle was won. And that was the first battle that they went in and they continued to go into the promised land. And if you remember when God numbered the people? Do you remember that story when God numbered all the people to split up the land? So that's what Joshua was doing. When Joshua went into the promised land, they started capturing all this land and claiming all this land that God had taken away from the Gentiles and given them to the Israelites. And after they'd split it up, there was, they hadn't finished the job. But one thing we learn in Joshua, this is our verse for today, Joshua told the people, he said, take good he. What does that mean? It means be careful. Make sure you do it. Take good heed, therefore, unto yourselves. So be careful and make sure of yourselves that ye love the Lord your God. See, so Joshua didn't want the people to go in, get the inheritance that God had given them, and then forget about God. Sometimes we forget about God, don't we? You know, God's so good to us. He gives us many blessings. He gives us many things. And sometimes we forget about Him. So Joshua didn't want the people to forget about God, to, forget the lo to love God. You know, because God certainly didn't forget to love us. You know, when God died on the cross for us, He showed us His love. The Bible says, God commended His love toward us. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So not only did God show love to the Israelites by giving them the inheritance, but he also showed us love when he came as the Lord Jesus Christ and died on the cross for us. All right, so let's read this together. This is our verse. Joshua chapter 23, verse 11. Take good heed therefore unto yourselves that ye love the Lord your God. Joshua chapter 23, verse 11. All right, now today's activity is a little different. We're not going to do a craft activity today. Today we're going to go outside and we're going to play some games. All right, so everyone stand up, let's go outside and we're going to play some games to help remind us about today's lesson. Okay, let's go.